I got a little tired of reviewing expensive gaming laptops and brand new machines, and so did my pocketbook, so this time I plucked a classic Dell Latitude out of eBay to see if getting something cheap and a little used is a good idea. And of course we're going to see if it can play games, because this is... Slap Tech. I found this old Dell laptop on eBay for about $250. Normally these are equipped with Intel's ULV processors, but this bad boy comes with a full board Intel Core i5, and when given enough things to do, it eats up 30 watts in this laptop, which is twice as much power as its ULV cousins. Naturally, this also produces, well, probably three times as much heat. I'll talk more about that later, but spoiler alert, if I had known how much heat this thing generates, the featured laptop would be a ULV version. This then is the Dell Latitude 5480. This particular unit houses the Intel Core i5-7440HQ, a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU that clocks 6 megs of cache up to 3.8 gigahertz. The 11th Gen Core i5 equivalent has 6 hyper-threaded cores, 12 megs of cache, and goes up to 4.5 gigahertz. So on paper, this relic of a CPU is a little down on power. Alongside it is the NVIDIA 930MX dedicated GPU with 2 gigs of DDR3 VRAM. Not GDDR5 or even GDDR3, just DDR3. Luckily, we have a full 16 gigs of memory to work with and a 256 gig NVMe SSD to help keep things nice and speedy. The 14-inch 1080p IPS screen helps us see what we're doing in 60 Hz, and this unit has a 68 watt-hour battery installed. It weighs 3.5 pounds, and while that's pretty hefty for a 14-inch laptop, it's pretty manageable overall. Like I mentioned previously, this unit was bought used on eBay and the seller didn't send it with an AC adapter. What a dick. Two replacement adapters were ordered because the first one was a third-party brick with a six-foot cord length that got so hot it concerned me. The OEM adapter gets much less hot and packs nine feet of cable. The battery life metrics of this laptop are a little skewed because this unit has a third-party 68 watt-hour battery installed. Reports suggest its life is down to 82%, and today that's good for 7 hours of internet work use, 6 hours of streaming video, and 1.5 and hours of gaming. That's not possible for a brand new $300 laptop, and it's rarely found on a new $600 laptop. That being said, I wouldn't recommend replacing any Dell component with a third-party part. Dell likes to use its own software against its users, and using third-party stuff means TPM errors and other stability issues. This battery seems to be holding up well and doesn't seem to be making any trouble, but I have no idea how old it is or how quickly it will deteriorate. The build quality of this machine has held up well over the years. The palm rest has most of the wear. As the finish is permanently worn, there are a couple noticeable scratches on the top cover, and the monitor has a small streak of something on it. I can't seem to clean it off with just water and a shop towel, but it's not visible when the screen is on, so I'm not going to worry about it. The finish on the keyboard isn't perfect, but it is in good enough shape for me, and I'm picky about the keyboard finish, so that's saying a lot. Sure, the chassis creaks and has plenty of flex to it, but the monitor is super rigid, the hinges don't squawk at all, and still keep the monitor wobble-free while in use. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right is the headset in, USB 3.0 that can fast charge your phone, VGA out, and a lock slot. On the left is Thunderbolt 3 that can charge the laptop, USB 3.0, and a full-sized SD card reader. The back is for the Gigabit LAN, exhaust, SIM card slot, HDMI, USB 3.0 for a total of three standard USBs, and the power hole. Plenty of ports, plenty of options, easy enough outputs for multiple monitors, I can't complain. The only thing I could ask for is mini display port, but really this is enough to work with in any situation, especially when a Thunderbolt dock is employed. The bottom cover is held down by eight captive screws so they can't be lost or mismatched. On the inside we can see there's a full-sized NVMe drive, a WAN slot that a smaller M.2 2242 drive will fit in, and two slots for memory. 
One lonely fan and heat pipe are responsible for keeping things cool, and now we know that if we wanted that mini display port, the lower NVMe drive would have to be sacrificed. Yeah, I'll take the second M.2 slot, a thank ya. Something else to note is that not all 5480s are created equal. Some have two SSD slots, others have an NVMe slot and a 2.5 inch drive bay. So when ordering a used 5480 and you want to buy more storage, it will be a good idea to wait until you can crack it open to see what kind of drives will work with it. The keyboard is something I shouldn't speak too much about. Originally, I'm sure it was good, but its accuracy has suffered under the sands of time. Specific keys have worn more than others, like the 4 and 5 keys, which mostly work, but every once in a while don't register under their first press. Otherwise, I can still get a score of well over 2,000 on Z-Type, which is the most useless benchmark ever. I just like bragging that I can get over 2,000 points on Z-Type. Seriously though, if a used Dell Latitudes keyboard is giving you beef, a replacement keyboard is available on eBay for $30, and it's not super hard to replace. In other news, it comes with a two-stage, classy-as-hell white backlight, function lock on the keyboard itself instead of the UEFI, and dedicated page scrolling keys, but home and end are secondary functions of left and right. That's a big no-no. I'd gladly accept the page scrolling keys as secondary functions and have dedicated home and end keys. If I had to guess why Dell chose this path, it's because the font size would have had to be changed for the page down label. Ugh. Function over form, Dell. Function over form. Using the touchpad of this laptop is a breath of fresh air. It has physical keys. Not just physical keys, two sets of physical keys. Because it also has a nub. I've reviewed used laptops with worn out nub mice before, but this one functions very well. That's not to say that every example is going to work great, but replacing the keyboard will also fix a worn out nipple mouse. Personally, I changed the gesture scroll direction on all the machines I review so that down gestures scroll down instead of up, and the Dell Latitude doesn't have this option. Windows emits it completely, and Dell's drivers won't properly install, so I'd plan on having to live with reversed gesture directions. It's not the end of the world for me, because some laptops that are my current daily drivers, ears looking at you, MSI GE66, forgets my preferences every once in a while anyway. Looking at the screen is not a bad experience at all. It does what you ask it to and never lets you down unless you're outside. The matte screen effectively mutes reflections, the IPS pixels don't let colors distort at any angle, and while the brightness does fade at a close angle, who cares because it tilts back 180 degrees, so finding a comfortable viewing angle is never impossible. Like I mentioned before, the hinges have held up perfectly well, don't creak at all, and there is zero wobble while using the laptop. Colors aren't accurate, don't pop, and can be considered a little dull if given some thought. Gradients aren't perfectly smooth, but also not bad, and ghosting is there, although relatively reduced. This panel is not very bright at all, I have it set to 3 ticks from the top to use it comfortably, whereas most notebooks I leave in the middle or closer to the bottom. Outdoor use is not recommended. Regardless, when indoors, you'll be fine, and when consuming moving pictures on Netflix or YouTube, it's definitely one of the best 14-inch laptop experiences under $1,000. And that's because of the screen in combination with the speakers. These noise emitters are excellent in themselves, how the solution is implemented is not, because they fire down. If the notebook is lifted up, that's when they really shine. The baseline in, oh I don't know, what's a couple good examples, let's say Calm Like a Bomb by Rage for the Machine, that baseline comes through clean without any software trickery. The deep bass in the package by A Perfect Circle, while a little weak, is understandable. The mid and treble ranges are also not lacking, though the sound is muffled and not just a little bit due to the whole down firing thing. Volume wise, these will surely fill a room, but they do crackle at max volume, and I don't think it's because they're worn. As you watch this video, I'm seeing if it's possible to Frankenstein these speakers into my GE66.
This is a test of the webcam here on the Dell Latitude 5480 720p. This is an excellent lighting. I have lights on all around my living room. As you can see, the colors are a little washed out, but they are accurate nonetheless. Some things that are not supposed to be dark are a little bit darker. And now my super loud AC unit is on. We're testing out the noise cancellation. The noise cancellation of some other notebooks that I just reviewed that are under $400, like the Acer Aspire 3, were excellent. So we're going to see if the Dell Latitude 5480 can match those. And this is a test of the webcam in poor lighting. I only have one lonely LED light on right up there. And as you can see, uh, the colors have dropped even more, but there is still some okay color compensation. This side of my face would be completely dark on lesser laptop webcams, so that's pretty cool. And that is a test of the webcam on the Dell Latitude 5480. System performance of the Dell Latitude 5480 leaves plenty to be desired. This 7th gen Core i5 has probably been showing its age for some time and struggles to benchmark a little bit higher than 11th gen ULV Core i3 CPUs. Don't even think about comparing it to its modern Core i5 siblings. Benchmarks aside, it might be a little less speedy for everyday tasks than a modern machine, but actually, not noticeably so. The story changes when not suckling the wall juice, where it's easy to tell that the CPU is taking a laid-back approach to tasks. For more intensive workloads like video editing or code compiling, the amateur could use it to learn how to do those things, but expanding one's craft will require a more serious machine. And as alluded to at the beginning of this video, the heat this thing puts out is something else. I had to put this laptop on a stand in order to set it on my lap, otherwise it would get uncomfortable fast. Even though it only utilizes as many as 30 out of 45 watts, the bottom still gets hot while doing things as simple as watching YouTube. One caveat I absolutely have to mention is that this unit at one point was giving me a TPM error, which prevented Windows from booting. It somehow went away on its own, but buyer beware that these laptops ain't perfect. If you run into it, try turning it off and leaving it unplugged for 30 seconds, then turn it back on. If that doesn't work, you'll want to start replacing things, starting with the power adapter if it's not an OEM. If that didn't work, replace the NVMe SSD next, and then maybe the battery. Everything is cheap, so you might as well try it all. On to gaming. There's a dedicated GPU here. Is it any good? No. To say that you're missing out on a quality gaming experience is an understatement. But Joel Michael, it has two gigs of VRAM. The VRAM is DDR3, not GDDR5. For today's games, think of it as not having VRAM at all. It is not on task when pitted against Iris XE, which is noticeably superior. A modern Core i3, which is less than Iris Xe, can play dead cells at 120Hz, and this Dell cannot. Even Witcher 2 is a big challenge for the 930MX. It's not all bad news though. On the other side of the coin, games that are designed to be fun for everyone, like the LEGO games or Overcooked 2, still play smooth as butter, and Blizzard games are still playable in low details at 720p. So at least it offers the same opportunities as a modern entry-level PC, albeit with slightly lower FPS. The story continues with emulators. GameCube, PS2, 3DS, and PSP emulation is satisfactory, but loading new assets like visual effects and music tend to momentarily bog things down. After everything is loaded in, you're off and running to the races. Everything below, like N64 and PSX on down, run great in upscaled resolutions. And if you love Dreamcast games, those run perfectly as well. Thanks to the minimized ghosting, 2D games look pretty good, too. On battery power, you can play upscaled N64 games for about 4 hours. That directly competes with the fanciest of purpose-built handhelds at less than half the price in a small form factor laptop with a nice keyboard, speakers, and screen. It's hard to get salty about it when it's all so sweet. Gaming on battery power is virtually the same as plugged in. There is a difference, but in a blind test, the difference is negligible. What's not negligible is the heat this thing produces. If you smell bacon while this notebook is on your lap, it's not coming from the kitchen, you're on fire, and you might have thigh cancer. Eww. For the bottom line, why would you buy this notebook? 
If all you're after is something cheap that won't put a bullet in your wallet should it be misplaced, and you want an overall quality PC experience, then have one of these on hand. It's not a workhorse, nor is it a gaming machine. It's cheap, has excellent peripherals, and nothing about it is annoying. If you want something better in the 14-inch segment, be prepared to pay at least twice as much as this, three times as much if you're after a gaming laptop. I'm seriously tempted to keep this thing around for when I want a PC away from home, especially for the battery life while playing N64 games. In conclusion, students get both of their thumbs, their roommate's thumbs, and their parents' thumbs up. It's cheap, has great battery life, and the keyboard is just fine. Yeah, the home and end keys are going to be a pain, but you can learn to adapt to them, and the SSD and 16 gigs of memory help keep things super speedy. Casual gamers can consider it. You have to be super casual in order to enjoy using this, as casual as wearing a Hawaiian shirt to Christmas Eve dinner. It's a little out of season, but effectively hides the post-Thanksgiving gut. Competitive gamers can keep scrolling, like swiping left past the overweight middle-aged women that are still living on the high from being prom queen and have a body count equal to the sum of digits on Goro's extended family. Just because some of them mated with two armed humans doesn't make it any less wrong, no matter how you look at it. Desktop replacement users can love this. It's small, has multiple display outputs, Thunderbolt 3, plenty of memory, but not a lot of expandable storage options. While it is down on power, speed isn't everything. And have I mentioned that it's cheap? Well, it's cheap. Home users get my endorsement, blessing, and confidence. It's a more powerful Chromebook at a Chromebook price that does Windows things. If you unplug it, it stays on for a long time, and the speakers make it fun to watch Blaze TV. And since this laptop is so inexpensive, you'll actually be able to buy those other things that Glenn Beck incessantly pitches, like gun holsters, gold futures, and home title insurance. Man, I need to stop telling those conservative inside jokes. This has been a review of the Dell Latitude 5480 here on SlapTech. This is the part of the video where I say more things to stall so you can click the like button before YouTube does its YouTube thing and runs ads that you might inadvertently click on and navigate away from the video, thereby preventing you from clicking the like button, which you should do right now. I can wait. On second thought, I can't wait. I have a Dell G15 on the way, and I need to record some background music for that video. Oh, and leave a comment too, or a question. Sometimes I respond, not always, but sometimes. Other people respond to stuff too. The internet is wonderful like that. In any case, thanks for watching, and you guys... Have a good night.